is Aster Ethics, the topic of a conference in Kansas City, Missouri, December 7th, 2011. And joining us now is one of the presenters, uh, Terry Roselle, who is the Rosemary Flanagan Chair at the Center for Practical Bioethics. Uh, your topic, Terry, was readiness and focus on disparities. Uh, that seems like a very heavy kind of issue, a heavy topic. Talk to us about what you tried to get across in your presentation today. I talked about readiness ethics and when we're thinking about being prepared or ready for a disaster situation, we need to look at who is most affected when a disaster happens. Research and experience tells us that those most affected in a disaster situation are those who are marginalized, who have less access to resources before the disaster happens. So a part of readiness would be looking at who those people are, who the vulnerable populations are, and what is it they need now in order to be better prepared later. One point you were making was that this ought to matter. Talk about that. First, I asked a question of students, and students asked some others for a total of about 42 respondents to a, a little survey, asking what does matter in a disaster situation. And of course, what matters to us is our family, our loved ones. But I was interested also in this rather diverse set of respondents that, that more than two thirds of them said what mattered to them also is how a disaster would affect those who have fewer resources, those who are marginalized, the elderly, the poor, the young, the old, those who have no one to take care of them or who are dependent now, those who are marginalized. So first of all, it does seem to matter to a lot of us. And then I shifted to saying, not only does it matter, it ought to matter to all of us. And though, uh, why, why should it matter to us? Uh, for one reason, because a lot of us are religious people and our religions all uh, ask us, command us to be concerned for the poor, for the marginalized, for those who are at risk. And also is just a pragmatic concern. If we do not uh, take seriously, if it doesn't matter to us that some are disparately affected in a disaster situation, we may all go down. I said, ashes, ashes, we all fall down, that little ditty from our childhood. There's a truth to that. And if for no other reason, pragmatically, it ought to matter to us. Another theme of your talk today was that the better served among us have a moral responsibility to make sure that we care for those who are underserved. To some extent, that is just common sense. If I have little to work with now, I'm less able to help those who might be disparately affected in a disaster. So, of course, those of us who have more are uh, required to give more. We're, we are able to respond, and therefore we are responsible. And you closed with uh, the concept of some moral principles, and you had about half a dozen or so. If you could pick out one, maybe two of the moral principles that you felt like were most relevant to a discussion around ethics during disasters, what would they be? Well, of course, I think they're all very important. Well, I knew that. Uh, therefore, we have, we have the whole list. <laughs> one of them is the principle of responsibility, and I just talked a little bit about that. Another is collaboration. We have the sense that oftentimes that there's nothing I can do. And the focus there is on the I. For a public disaster, uh, preparation for one, uh, there may be a lot that I cannot personally do, but collaboratively, we can do much. So that's another principle. Another one is that of, of uh, distribution of resources in advance, and I called it preferential pre-distribution. Looking for those who are, are more vulnerable and, and uh, assuring that prior to the pre-disaster, pre before it happens, that we are, are redistributing uh, wealth, resources, 
goods, services, access uh, in advance. Otherwise, we know what will happen. Disaster hits and the marginalized are marginalized again. And post-disaster, the marginalized are even more marginalized. If that's the sort of society we want to live in, then do nothing. If that is not the society we would prefer to live in, we need to address that before the disaster happens. Terry Roselle is the Rosemary Flanagan Chair at the Center for Practical Bioethics. Thanks for your time and good luck to you. Thank you.